welcome back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Brody. I am joined alongside my good friend and special guest, Adam Kinross from Kenny Games. And today we're hitting on how the offense is impacted by Justin Fields being the starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears. We'll be greatly improved. Need a few weeks? Don't worry. We got it all here. But before we dive into it, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Stupid Car Tray. Tired of your pizza topping sliding, office coffee distracting you while driving, grease and other stains getting on your seat, or you're just enjoying a game on the couch and don't want to lean over, look no further than the Stupid Car Tray. Visit www.stupidcartray.com and use discount code J16 to get 16% off your entire order. Link in the description. SCT saves the day. Head over to our website in the description and get 16% off your entire order. Adam, welcome back to the show. Mustache looks absolutely fantastic. Justin Fields' jersey looks even better. How are we doing today, my man? Doing fantastic. Mustache feels great. I feel like a real Chicago Bears fan now that I'm not in Chicago anymore. This is just, it's a little taste of home, you know? Really, literally above my lip, a little taste of home. Do you mean taste of home as in you get your food stuck in it and then like five hours later you lick it and then you're like, oh, there's that Lumal Nadis I ordered from Chicago that just flew in. <laughs> exactly. That frozen lose that just doesn't hit quite the same. Well, at least I get a little bit of seconds, a little bit of leftovers when it gets stuck in the stash, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I love it. It looks great. I know, I know Adam, uh, all you need to get is the Mike Ditka like sunglasses now, which I'm more than happy to send to you and I think you're good to go. It's the hollow. It's on the Halloween agenda. I know it's not like a, a new, you know, innovative costume, but for me, again, little taste of home. There you go. There you go. Well, let's jump into it. Let's talk about a little taste of home with the Chicago Bears. We're going to be hitting on the offense strictly on this episode, folks. So no defense today, but the offense last week and so far, we're going to go into the rankings real fast, Adam. And then we're going to talk about why they might be placed there. I want to get your opinion on a few things. So overall, the offense is ranked 29th, according to ESPN. No shock there considering that our passing is ranked 29th, according to ESPN. Would be much higher if there wasn't half a dozen drops last week alone from Justin Fields to his wide receivers. Uh, Allen Robinson dropped two touchdown passes that were both on deep balls. Cole Komet dropped a touchdown pass. Donnell Mooney had a few deep passes. Matt Nagy was throwing it deep. There was no doubt about that. But rushing, as Adam Tatsay, is run the damn ball. Rushing is ranked eighth in the league, thanks to David Montgomery and Damian Williams and Khalil Herbert. So, you know, there's a pro and a con to the offense right now. Obviously, passing isn't doesn't look sexy, but it's getting there. Running looks great so far. So, Adam, in regards to Matt Nagy's play calling, after the first time we spoke, after the very drunken episode after the L.A. Rams game, did Matt Nagy's play calling improve against the Bengals? I know the Bengals were a much easier defense than the Rams, but was it improved, in your opinion, from what you saw? Play calling to me specifically didn't change too much. I thought the execution was a lot better. I thought Andy getting out of the pocket and running really opened up the field, throwing the ball down the field opened up the play calling a lot more. So I don't look, we know that Andy Dalton didn't throw the ball deep the first game. That's no surprise. We saw the stat sheet. They did throw the ball deep the second game. We don't even know if those routes were on the field. The first game, I didn't personally watch the film from it. So look, there's still to me just personally as a bears fan, I still just see a lot of gadget stuff out there. When you have a running back, that's as good as David Montgomery is. And that can really open up the game for you with play action, with bootleg, with rollout. We saw Andy get a little bit more mobile, which was great to me. It was the X execution from the offense that made a lot more of the difference the willingness to throw the ball down the field again that massive drop from Allen Robinson would have dramatically changed Justin Fields score sheet but I just thought the execution the willingness to throw the ball down the field was a lot better it just it's it's always feels a little bit too gimmicky too gadgety with Matt Nagy a lot of times we have these really small non-run blocking receivers in run blocking sets or trying to run block near the line of scrimmage which is not going to benefit the run game at all. So the fact that Montgomery is still doing that, despite the fact that you, a lot of times, if you look at the film, you have these really small receivers and their inability to run block at the line of scrimmage is just even that much more impressive. So I really thought the execution was a lot better. I really thought the willingness to throw the ball and air the ball down the field was a lot better, but it still feels kind of gadgety to me. And the one thing I want to drive home is just keep David Montgomery in the game. Okay. I don't hate Damian Williams. I think he's a great alternative option when needed, but Christian McCaffrey is coming out for one, maybe two plays a game because he is so dominant offensively that he does so much for the Panthers offense. 
David Montgomery's the same way. Like, I feel like he's coming out too often. Keep him in the game, man. He's like, our, he's our best player. I swear to God, he is our best offensive weapon. And we bring him out of the game too much to try to get gadgety and gimmicky. And that's just kind of my perception on it. So play calling was maybe a little bit improved. I really just thought the execution was a lot better. And please keep David Montgomery in the game for more snaps. That's really what I want to drive home. In regards to Dave Montgomery and Madden, is he a beast or no? Uh, in the regular game mode, they still have him as an elusive player. I brought this up the first podcast that we did together, Nick. They still have him as, a, as an elusive back. To me, he's more of, of like a trucking, put your head down and run through people back. Obviously, he makes linebackers miss like he did to whoever that Bengals linebacker was. I can't remember on the, the play that was flagged and came back. Look, he I mean, he's he's very dynamic, right? But to me, he he's kind of a brute force. He's always been, but... In in regular Madden, uh, he's still kind of slow. So in Madden terms, makes him not that great, unfortunately. But that's just how the game works. And I agree with you. So I just had to ask that while I was on top of mind. But I like I agree with you that David Montgomery does come out of the game too much. It, it creates you know inconsistency. If he's on a roll and then the Bears take him out, it's like what was the point? Like what if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like John Madden always used to say in the older Maddens. I remember that was always a big thing when he was announcing it. So. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, Matt Nagy. But, you know, Damian Williams is a great passing, pass blocking running back. You got to give him credit there. Mm -hmm. He had a couple huge blocks against uh, Aaron Donald in the LA Rams game. Not so much against the Bengals. He was more used like as an overall weapon. But yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Now, the guys that are helping make David Montgomery's life is the, obviously the offensive line. And the offensive line, and Adam, I want to hear your opinion on it in a second. I just want to run through a few things with you is better than most Bears fans expected out of the gate so far, especially going against Aaron Donald and the LA Rams, and then a young Cincinnati uh, defensive line. Very, very impressive. So Jermaine, uh, Jermaine Effetti and Jason Peters, both are tackles right now. Again, Jason Peters is 39 years old, signed to a veteran's minimum contract. Um, were ranked the top tackles in the league last year. And again, you're against Cincinnati. You were not, you were not against the LA Rams. Cody Whitehair looks like a top three guard, which he is ranked according to Fox Sports. James Daniel looks to be shaking off the rust from his injury last year. And Sam Mustaver is doing great on the run for Dave Montgomery, but he was a little off with Justin Fields. Obviously, he's been working with Andy Dalton this whole entire offseason, so that could cause some slight confusion, hopefully with Justin Fields running with the ones this week at practice. That'll get shaken out. But the Bears' low-ranking passing yards is not due to the offensive line's play. Because, Adam, if I told you this, before the beginning of the year, that the Bears would only have two sacks given up for the first two games, one again going against Aaron Donald and the LA Rams. Would you believe me? And did you think like this would be said before week one? And could Fields, uh, could Fields now type of play? So Andy Don's obviously more of a pocket passer, though you said he can use his feet. Fields is more of using his feet. Do you think that this sack number is going to go up overall? So your impression of the offensive line and how they're doing, and do you think that Justin Fields is going to make them better? or it's actually could potentially hurt their stats with him kind of moving around panicking, potentially getting taking a sack instead of throwing it out of bounds. Well, I just want to start off by saying the expectations were dramatically low for the offensive sure. line. Sure. So <laughs> I want to say the floor was very, very, very low. And uh, they have pleasantly surprised a lot of people. The pass protection has been great. I also think you have to look at that game one and see that Andy Dalton was getting the ball out in, a, in like two seconds or under. So yes. <laughs> if he would have gotten sacked in that game with how quickly he was getting rid of the ball, we would have had serious issues. Cause that would have mean you would have had free runners all game if he was still taking sacks. So I think they've been good. They've been a pleasant surprise. Um, the tackles have been phenomenal. 39 year old Jason Peters has just been uh, fantastic. So uh, like a pleasant surprise there, the tackles have been great. Mustafer has been uh, pitifully bad. If you ask me, he's been halfway decent in the run game, but if you go back and watch a lot of the tape, he's missing blocks. He doesn't know his assignments and white hair is kind of bailing him out in a lot of ways. So, and Daniels is, is bailing him out. So what uh, Mustafer has been abysmal, especially in the passing game and kind of in the run game. He's been a little bit better in the run game. But uh, the communication there between him and Fields, that's hopefully, you know, they have a week of Fields working out with the ones to, to hopefully get that sorted out, take a lot of snaps and kind of practice. Peyton Manning on the Monday Night Broadcast said you have a lot more chance to fumble when you're under center as opposed to shotgun. So I would like to see them out or taking snaps out of the shotgun. 
utilizing his own option or his own read with Justin Fields to really open up the run game and give David Montgomery, hopefully even more of an edge on that um, and get outside, right? Like it's unfortunate that we don't have Jenkins. Um, it's unfortunate that Borum got injured, but I have been pleasantly surprised with the offensive line as an entire unit. I think Justin Fields' impact is going to be rough at first because they're used to to, to protecting for a pocket passer. Dalton yep. is likely to stay in the pocket despite his couple scrambles last week. And that's really what they've been working towards in the offseason. And that's what they've been practicing. That's how the ones have been working. So I think they're going to be a lot of ways used to that of keeping the pocket contained and keeping protection around the pocket fields is going to want to get out. That's his, his best ability is his legs is his feet, his ability to open up the field and extend plays. So they have to make sure that their focus this week is to not give up on a play that goes for the receivers. The same way you got to practice. Travis Kels talks about this all the time. Like a play is never over with Patrick Mahomes. You always run. You're always looking back. You're always trying to get open until the whistle rings. And I really hope our receivers and our offensive line are being driven home the same thing by Matt Nagy and the offensive line coach and Bill Lazor like, because plays are not going to be finished in one to two seconds. The ball's not coming out in one to two seconds with fields. He's going to extend the play. So the offensive line really has to go the whistle. And I think that's kind of the key X factor is will they play till the end of the play this week and give him a chance to get out? Because even if the pocket closes in, He's going to find a way to be elusive. He's going to find a way to get out. He's going to find a way to scramble or find receivers down the field late on, later on in the play. So I've been pleasantly surprised. I really hope that they continue that into this week, continue, you know, with the great run blocking and please protect our quarterback. We don't want a Joe Burrow situation. Please, 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 please protect our franchise quarterback. What's wrong with Nick Foles going in? If something wrong, goes wrong, Adam, come on. EDN, man. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I think we saw enough of that last year. I'm, I'm uh, kind of over it. I really like what you said, like the receivers, the line, keep going till the whistle blows because Justin Field is going to extend a play as much as he can. Andy Dalton kind of shocked a lot of people with his feet. I'm not saying he's lightning 4.44 fast, but he's not slow either. I mean, like Nick Foles is slow. There's no doubt about that. If if this was the type of protection that Nick Foles got last year in the pocket, might have been better. But that also was against a Bengals, you know, younger defensive line that's talented, but not like the LA Rams, like you said, where there's a lot of quick passes. So uh, let's go to the running game really fast. I know we kind of hit on it. Uh, David Montgomery last week had a quote unquote slower game, according to, you know, Bears fans. He still rushed for 61 yards on 20 attempts. So I had a lot, about three yards of carry, but, you know, he still has 169 nice uh, yards uh, through two games with a touchdown. If he keeps this up, it, you know, that's technically 1,437 yards rushing alone for the season. So that's some nice stats by David Montgomery. So he's ripping it up and you kind of hit on it. Damian Williams is looking like a strong backup right now. Great pass protector uh, in regards to the running back game. Uh, you know, overall, he's still not involved as many want him to be. And that's just in regards to like play action packages. I know that you made a really good point saying like, keep him in the game. Christian McCaffrey only goes out, you know, one to two times a game because he's dominant. David Montgomery, I totally agree. But if you have a two back uh, play going on, Damian Williams is a very strong person to have. So Adam, really quickly before we go into wide receivers and tight ends to wrap up the episode, how confident are you in this backfield? Do you feel it's improved compared to previous years, especially last year's room? And will fields help open up the running game for David Montgomery and Damian Williams with his ability at quarterback to run it himself and just overall his quarterback ability? Yeah, I think the backfield has dramatically improved. David Montgomery has not only improved his elusiveness, his strength, but he's literally improved his speed. I, I don't know if it was a 40 time that's gotten faster or miles per hour that he ran on like one of the first runs against the Rams that they clocked him at faster. He's literally gotten faster year over year, which is an insane thing to fathom and think about because he's also gotten stronger. He's gotten bigger and he's gotten more elusive as a back too. I am not sliding Damian Williams. Damian Williams has been great. Like you said, he's great in pass protection as well as he, he adds a lot of versatility. He, he's great in the pass game as well. And he has the ability to run the ball. Definitely don't want to take that away from him. I'm just saying you have a Ferrari with David Montgomery, Let, like unleash that Ferrari, man. Like he is so good. And I'm not saying they haven't unleashed it, but I'm just saying, why would you want to take that Ferrari out for like, uh, you know, Mercedes Benz C-Class and Damian Williams? If, if that's like the best metaphor that I could give. 
But the days of, of like the truly dominant one running back system, with the exception of like Derrick Henry or Delvin Cook, they're like for the most part gone. So I'm not going to slight the Bears for taking Montgomery out. It's good to get keep him rested, to not have him in on every play because that, that avoids the, the uh, chance of injury in a lot of ways. But I'm just saying he he's so, so, so good that I want him in there for as many plays as possible because not only is he fun to watch, but he completely opens up the offense, the play action game, which is really, really crucial because the Bears are or at least should be a run first team. And so if we can lever use his dominant run game to leverage play action, that's great. And Damien Williams only getting so many touches actually handed off to him. So how well can we effectively use a, a play action game when Damien Williams is in? I don't really know. I guess, you know, time will tell if they continue to try to test that out. But I'm very impressed with the backfield. I'm very impressed with David Montgomery. I'm impressed with Damien Williams. I think we're still missing Tariq Cohen. He is a pretty big part of this offense. When he does come back, I'd love to see some two running back sets. I know we run a lot of two tight end sets, uh, a lot of 12 personnel, but Tariq Cohen, all defenders when asked about Tariq Cohen is you have to know where he is on the field. He's almost like a Tyree kill in that sense. And no, he's not Tyree kill, but he is kind of an X factor, right? He is, he is a game changer. So I miss him. I, I think he would dramatically help our running back, especially in the past game. But I've been very, very, very impressed with David Montgomery and Damian Williams alike. Yeah, well, just just to confirm, we and we talked about this yesterday on yesterday on yesterday's podcast with London is that the Bears are trying out a lot of running backs right now, and that was kind of unexpected. A lot of people expected cornerbacks to be tried out, even though it was much improved last week against the Cincinnati Bengals. You know, bringing in running backs and Tyreek Cohen still is in street clothes, still kind of wobbling around. Not a good sign. There's been reports that potentially he re-injured that knee. So I hope I hope he comes back this year too. But right now it's looking doubtful and that's a big hurt. But Damian Williams is just a bigger Tyree Cohen in, in some, like just his energy, you know, his ability. But, you know, overall, I, I would like to see him back too. There is no doubt about that. And then also when you made the, uh, the Dave Montgomery comment about him being a Ferrari, I honestly thought you were going to do a Maserati instead and like start, say life is good because, you know, the Maserati <laughs> goes one No, Joe Walsh has not entered the chat, Nick. Joe uh, Walsh is not here. That's for another time. That's for another time. <laughs> uh, let's go into the last topic, though, real fast. Wide receivers and tight ends. You know, last week was pretty rough in regards to Allen. Allen Robinson had a touchdown. He had the opening touchdown of the game last week. But overall, he had two other major drops in the end zone alone. There was other plays during the game that he could have made. Allen Robinson just also had a bad attitude after in his press conference on Monday. So that was kind of – but he said it was nothing to do with his contract. He was, quote, unquote, tired. So I was like, okay, well, maybe he went out and partied the night before. I don't know. Uh, but, Club you know, dub. Jimmy, Club Dub was popping. That's, what, that's all I heard. I didn't get my invite. I know you didn't get your invite. You know, <laughs> they didn't want to fly you out from Denver. But um, another thing is that Jimmy, Graham's, uh, Jimmy Graham against the Rams, I don't know if you remember this exact play from when we talked about it. Or, you know, I don't know if, even if we did talk about it. I'd have to go back and watch. It was a rough night that night. Um, but he could have easily had a touchdown. He was going against a smaller Rams defender and about three yards out from the end zone, Jimmy Graham just did not fight his way into the end zone. He just kind of was like, up, oh, whatever, like I caught it. And that was something that was really missed. And it was from Andy Dalton, so what? But, you know, overall, that was just something that's discouraging to see. Jimmy Graham last year was just bulldozing over guys. And, you know, Jimmy Graham is not the starting tight end this year. They have Cole Komet as tight end one, which, you know, they do run a lot of tight end sets, but Jimmy Graham, like, you know, he did the signing bonus, everything. So that's one thing. Cole Komet also had that big drop last game against the Cincinnati Bengals in the end zone. And we already hit on Allen Robinson. And then Darnell Mooney, there were a couple really deep, nice balls that went right off his fingertips. You know, I understand it's off your fingertips, but if it hits your hands, like coaches always say, you can catch the ball somehow. So you're a professional athlete. Overall, Adam, before we close out, how do you feel about this group? Do you think they can rebound? Is there anything that shocks you so far? And obviously where there can be improvement. Uh, one, of course they can rebound. This is an exceptionally talented wide receiver room. I agree. So I'm confident Allen Robinson is going to rebound. He's not going to drop many balls in the end zone ever. So he hasn't in the past ever. So I'm fairly confident that was uh, the exception, not the rule. Darnell Mooney. Uh, he's a younger guy. You can't have drops, man, especially from a younger quarterback who puts it right on the money. He's reading a defense. He's throwing the ball. Well, you, you have to give him the confidence that he can throw the ball to you. If he only feels like he can throw to a tight end or only feels like he can throw to Allen Robinson, 
it's not going to serve well for for Justin Fields, right? That's my main worry is the confidence. And he, the dude is stoic as ever. He's the most confident quarterback, I think, that came out of the draft just in his in himself, in his own ability. So, no, it's not going to shake him. But if this continues to happen week after week after week after week, he's going to feel like he can't throw to his receivers. He's going to start look to using his legs a lot more. And that's what worries me. So I'm confident they can rebound. The drops, number one priority, have got to stop. They cannot continue. We had that with Anthony Miller a lot last year, which yeah. really grinded my gears as a Bears fan. And I I'm confident that we won't see that again because if we do, I might lose it personally. But uh, as far as the tight ends, um, the play with Jimmy Graham, I vaguely remember it. I don't remember it bothering me too much, which is why I think that maybe it wasn't as big of a deal that uh that he didn't get into the end zone that play but to me the tight ends need to learn how to freaking block man yeah. as a tight end you're a dual purpose threat and i understand jimmy graham is at the tail end of his career he's a little bit older he's never been a blocking tight end he's not a george kittle right like he's he, he's mainly a receiving tight end and we use his big frame in the red zone and we can leverage that uh as a big target especially when we get good matchups with him. But what really bothers me is when we have two tight ends out front trying to block two defensive backs against the Bengals, and they both completely missed. One yep. of them was like a blatant whiff, like barely even touched the guy. Another guy got block shedded from a defensive back. I don't know if it was Komet or Graham. One of them got block shedded within like half a second, which is just embarrassing. Like, that was Nagy being great. That was exceptional. He he had the 12 personnel. He got the matchups, the blocking matchups on that play. It was it was phenomenal execution. And then our tight ends blatantly missed the blocks. Fields couldn't get in the end zone when you should have had an easy walk in touchdown. So our tight ends need to block, right? We're a run first team. We need to be a run first team, especially with the young quarterback that's going to help him in play action. And if we, if David Montgomery or Damian Williams are getting outside or Justin Fields is getting outside and our tight ends are blatantly missing blocks on defensive backs, nonetheless, linebackers are a different story. Defensive ends are a different story. But if you're blatantly missing blocks on defensive backs, that's a massive, massive issue for a young, fast quarterback and a great, strong run game. So that's my biggest priority above all the drops, because I'm confident they're going to get that figured out. I, I really want our tight ends to learn how to block or to adjust their blocking or to get back to how they used to block. I don't know what the answer is, but you need to block in the run game. That's one of the most important jobs, especially when you're running two tight end sets. Well, yeah, wow. Wow. Grows a mustache and instantly cuts coach Dicka. That's all I got to say. Adam is spot on. With oh, bears. Uh, yeah. So I, I agree with you. I think there's a lot of improvement and Charles Tillman said it best after week one, there's a lot of things that the bears did wrong, but there's so many, they're all small things that can be fixed easily. We saw a lot of them get fixed against the Bengals, And I think that this is just a second wave of things that need to get fixed early in the season. And in, in regards to that. So Hopefully we'll see that more again, a completely different animal in the Cleveland Browns, though the Browns secondary is struggling pretty bad, uh, according to reports. And if you, I mean, you look at their stats, like their front seven's great, but their secondary through two games, not so hot. So overall, not too bad. Uh, but that's our, that's our offensive take. Adam, great as always to have you on. Thank you for jumping on. I love the whole look. You got everything going for you right now. Again, I just make say sure one thing you, real fast, Nick. Absolutely. One thing. Absolutely. I just want to say uh, Eddie Jackson had a fantastic game with he both did. a strip as well as a huge stop getting through the line of scrimmage on a third and one against the Bengals, with the exception of that horrible missed tackle on the Jamar Chase touchdown that should have at minimum, at minimum should have, should have been stopped at like the 10 yard line. And then he missed the tackle. So that was bad, but Eddie Jackson really rebounded. I'm glad for, you know, for the most part, he kind of silenced the critics and silenced the crowd. Just want to say, my rant was one, a drunken rant, but also because I love you as a player. So I'm glad you rebounded. I want to see that continue. I, you know, I want to cheer for you. I want to be on your side again and always am as a bears fan, but uh, Eddie Jackson and a lot of the defense really turned it on. And also Roquan Smith is a freaking monster. Okay. That's if, all. If, if he is not all pro, if he's not a pro bowl this year, like outrage, absolute outrage, yeah. walk into Roger Goodell's house with uh, Dave Portnoy. We're going to just, <laughs> Stand outside and be like, oh, we're here. I'll be there to bail you out of jail when he inevitably gets you arrested. Might be a big bail. Oh, I got to <laughs> say to that. But anyway, thank you very much for coming on, Adam. Uh, really appreciate it as always and hope to see you soon. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Take care. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for coming on today. We'll see you guys next time.